It's great to be here. It's very fantastic to see so many people who want to see my first performance on Broadway. <laughs> um, but in my part of the world, we usually, or we try to, to read a small story to our children before they go to sleep every evening. And I will do that for you now. This is a story about a town that had to move. There once was a small town that was built on top of a mine, thanks to the wealth created by, the, uh, by what was in the mine and the beauty of the nature around, the town became prosperous and successful. What came up from the mine were sought after and uh, sold worldwide. But the mine gives and the mine takes, as the people in the town said. When the mine became bigger, the ground began to crumble and gradually a large pit was created in the middle of the town. Then people started to become increasingly concerned about the pit because it demanded homes, schools, shops and also the church. People began to doubt that there was a future in the small town and they began to both hate and love the mine. Well, that was all for now. I hope you didn't fall asleep um, because I'm going to tell you a little bit of about the rest. This town is located very far up in the north of Sweden. Uh, it's called Gällivare, 18,000 inhabitants, no unemployment, quite wealthy and uh, it works quite well. We came up there, um, I think it was about four or five years ago, and we saw that they were, in fact, moving the town, the moving the city. What a fantastic project. We were really excited. But we also saw that there were a lot of problems about that. Problems that they really didn't know how to handle. And we looked at it and we said, wow. What a fantastic design project. There are 3,500 people in this area that has to move within 10 years. They, we know exactly the target group. This could be something very exciting to do something about. So we talked about the mining company, uh, the uh, authorities up in the, in, the, in the city, and also the government, and said, why not try to do a design workshop, international design workshop in this about this. And they said, why not? We try that. Everything ev else seems to be difficult for us, so we try that try to do so. So we got the money and we planned it and we invited a lot of people. Because we said to the government that what they have been doing wrong is that they are not they should not focus on houses. They should focus on the people. So see that b the, the, the problem behind the problem. So we invited um, 40 different uh, experts from all over the world, from 17 countries. There were architects, designers, there were um, num a, num a lot of people with, with, back with different backgrounds. And you can find Frank up here somewhere if you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and anyway, they, come to, they came up to, to this place and spent two weeks in a workshop. And uh, this workshop was located in a sport arena that we tr uh, changed to, f to, to, to a workshop area. And the participants in the workshop were allowed to could go around. We invited the, cit the citizens up there to come to the arena. That was difficult. But the participants, they w traveled or visit the families in their homes. They met them in the street. They talked to people wherever they were. They also went down in the mine and had lunch on thousand meters below the ground. And they were working day and night in this area to uh, and also could hear the blasts underneath, feeling the floor was shaking, seeing the lamps in the ceiling swinging, and re really got a fantastic research. <coughs> and uh, the thing is that they worked hard for two, year two, <laughs> two years, oh God, uh, no, two, two weeks, and uh, they ga gave suggestions for the 
for the mining company and for the, the uh, um, uh, city authorities up there, the, what, all, what sh they should change and what they should do more. They gave a huge number of inspirational material, s uh, sketches, pictures and everything. But the most important thing is that was how to do it. Well, the text is over here, very small. First of all, they should <coughs> do something that I'm not, I sh not what I'm doing now. I'm talking, just talking, I'm having a monologue. They have to communicate by discussing. They talk to the people, but they must listen to them and have discussions. That was the most important thing, because they thought they were informing people all the time, but that was not the case. You have to talk to them, you have to listen to the people. Uh, and you have to, b everything you built, you should build for a um, desirable community. And it's not only about the houses where they live, it's, only about, it's also about how the they create the houses around, like uh, uh, tourist attractions or whatever it is. This is a place, uh, just an idea that they show that could be somewhere to go to look at the reindeers up there. The third is uh, to attract people with, sustainable, uh, with a sustainable environment. And that is one of the most important things. Um, in this area, it's quite boring in, in the, uh, the, uh, the living area they have today. So they have to do something that is attractive, but in the long run. And they should also m build with materials and all that that is they can find locally and uh, be a better way in the long run. And we should also try to embrace the positive uniqueness that uh, there is over there. And there is. It's a fantastic nature. It's a huge country, very few people, 18,000 inhabitants, 1.5 inhabitants per square kilometer. So there is possibilities to do something, <laughs> to explore the nature and to see, uh, to make, to create attractions. And um, you should also learn to stick to the people-centered process that we started, or the, uh, the, the uh, workshop started. I mean, we were the up there, we were talking to people in a way they never experienced before. And they must go on doing that. And um, we, we think that that is one of the most important things. And we have to help people to own their common vision. And wh what I mention now is, in fact, uh, the start of a three-year project. They started to build a vision about this town. Why should I want to live in this place 2030? Why, what is important to me? Why, what should the town do? What could I do myself? <coughs> and they have been working with it for three years just to create the vision and the goals for that. So what, uh, where are we today and where do, we, where do we want to be in 2030? And then, we s they, they at the, as a parallel to that, they were doing it together with other organizations, together with the, per t t with the persons all that lives there, who lives there. What does this common vision mean to me, to my personal acting, so to say, to reach, the, to reach my goals for 2030. To, it took, uh, has been taken about three years. They have had seminars, conferences, everything, you name it, together with, with the inhabitants, with organizations, and also 1,500 school children included in, in this uh, visionary job. And they became a very important um, part of it because they were became a kind of ambassadors for the positive future. So this was actually something um, very, very interesting. So um, this is 
the re main results that came up. And they have actually been working on this plan since then. So we managed during this creative um, workshop, the, what we did during this creative workshop, they adopted. And they, they really managed to do something else than they were planning from the beginning. And all this has been uh, very in inspiring to us, really. And, um, uh, and I learned so m we learned so much from it. We learned that the co-creation model, even in this case, could be very valuable. It, it, it created more ideas, better ideas, more sustainable ideas, and first of all, it, it created more positive people. People felt that were they were involved in their own future, instead of this, th what, what you saw in the beginning, that they were moving houses. And uh, th they felt that th it, there is something in the future that could be good for us. So that was inspiring. And I also have the feeling that, <laughs> I, or I know, that this whole thing was inspiring to us, our organization, and to me especially. Because I had the, from the beginning when I started to work in this organization where I work today, I was uh, convinced that we should try to use design process, the creative design process, in many new areas. And it is possible to, to solve problems in, in, in another context uh, that could be very valuable. So I want to experiment with this. So this was one of our experiments, and we were very happy about it. And the next experience for us, or the experiment for me at least, I have a dream um, that would be quite interesting to, to try. As I saw that um, this is a way of coming closer to the people living there, to the inhabitants, it, it, it became a kind of a more democratic way of, of finding solutions. So why not, in my dream, in my head, could be quite interesting to try the design process to redesign democracy. <laughs> we have had democracy the way we have it. It's a good way for about 200 years. But since then we got electricity, we got computers, we got telephones. There must be a possibility to make it even more effective to make it more interesting. Okay. So that is what I will do in the future, maybe. So before I, I finish, I can tell you that this house that you also saw in the beginning, it's now owned, it's up in Yelivare, where this place is. It's now owned by an Italian family. And they bought it because they were tired of going to the Alps with no snow. So the climate change has made this area attractive, because here they can go to find one of the best snows in the world, I would say. But it's positive and negative about the climate change. Okay. Thank you.